A ton of pterosaurs have come out of China, Brazil, and Germany. There are a few major chunks of the world that don't produce as many pterosaurs, like the US, most tropical places, many African countries, and more. However, there are a ton of smaller scale pterosaur voids across the various countries outside of the major pterosaur hotspots that need more investigation. One such area is Japan, and it has just produced a brand new specimen to include in analyses of pterosaur diversity. While I have your attention, I have two other channels you should check out when you get a chance. Edge of Reality is where I talk about cryptids and the paranormal, anything that is creepy, crawly, and outside of the realm of science. Edge's World of Monsters is where I tackle basically anything fictitious, whether that be kaiju or dragons. Japan once had a large, warm-blooded, flying reptilian beast with a pair of short hind legs and a pointy beak. No, I'm not talking about Rodan, though I have before. I'm talking about Rodan's inspiration, the pterosaurs. Prehistoric Japanese megafauna aren't talked about very often in Western media. This is partially due to Orientalism, anti-Asian sentiments, and American exceptionalism. But it also has a good amount to do with the fact that there really haven't been many named species of dinosaur, pterosaur, croc, or marine reptile from Japan. Lots of various bits and chips of all the usual Mesozoic animal groups have been found ever since people started looking, but only a few have ever been complete enough to give names to. Despite the arbitrariness of names, their real use is just in bookkeeping, names help to give attention to real fossil specimens that would otherwise be left in a drawer labeled as indeterminate. The first named Japanese dinosaur was Nipponosaurus back in 1936, but not much else came out of Japan until a period from the 1980s till the early 2000s. This more recent chunk of time saw massive dig site expansion into the Kitadani formation, resulting in the slew of place named animals and the rise of one of the most dinocentric cities in the world, Katsuyama Fukui. Over the years, Japanese researchers have gifted us with Fukui Raptor, Fukui Saurus, Fukui Titan, Fukui Venator, and Fukui Turex, among others. On top of that, there are of course plenty other rocky outcrops throughout Japan that have eroded their fossil secrets over the decades. Despite all this, pterosaurs remain elusive. Technically, Japanese pterosaurs have been known to science since the 1970s, but all have been extremely fragmentary. Their fossil record consists unexhaustively of a femur, foot bone, toe bone, and tail bone from a pteranodontid in Hokkaido, a partial skull of a pteranodontid from Hokkaido, wing bone of a sungaripterid from Honshu, plus an ashtarkid wing bone, enigmatic hand bone, and an ashtarkid neck bone from Kyushu. It's the neck bone that has been picked out of the latter trio to receive a more in-depth analysis, which was published in November of 2024 in the journal Cretaceous Research by Sean Yu Jo of the College of Life Sciences at Shihezi University, Naoki Ikigami of the Mufune Dinosaur Museum, Rodrigo Vegas of the Zoology Museum at Sao Paulo University, Toru Yoshinaga, Takahiro Sato, Toshifumi Mukenoki, and Jun Otani of the Kumamoto University, and Yoshitsugu Kobayashi of the Hokkaido University Museum. Since what we're dealing with here is just a single neck vertebra, why don't we take a quick tour of the bloody thing? Here you go. Yep, that's all there is to it. Not impressive in the slightest. This specimen was discovered in the late 1990s, eroding from an outcrop that belongs to the Mifune group near the Amagami Dam and Mifune Town, Gamimashiki, Kumamoto Prefecture. It specifically came from a chunk of that Mufune group called the Upper Formation, more precisely the middle of the Upper Formation. Unfortunately, no one has done a full comprehensive restudy of the Mufune group since the 1930s, so the names for the formations within the group have remained Basal, Lower, and Upper Formations, despite this being an initially informal designation. But no sense hearing me lament about nerdy labels that no one cares about. 
This horrifically disappointing specimen was originally identified as the fourth or fifth vertebra of the neck of an indeterminate Ashtarkid pterosaur in a 2000 paper briefly describing it. Back then, not many Ashtarka pterosaurs were known to science, and those that were pretty much included bits and pieces. That meant that 2000 author team couldn't really give you a straight answer as to what the thing was. Fast forward to our 2024 team, and pterosaurology is now far more advanced. Ashtarkids are some of the most numerous pterosaurs known to science at this time. It's with the quantum leap in pterosaur science that the 2024 team decided to take a second look at the neck bone and find out if it can be given a better label. Their hunch was correct. With the updates in pterosaur data and a fresh new CT scan of the bone, the team was able to find that the bone did preserve enough anatomical traits to set it apart from all other Japanese pterosaur fossils and those of already known Ashtarkid pterosaurs. That means a new label. Nipponopterus mifunensis, with the genus being in reference to the Japanese word for Japan, plus the Greek root for wing, and the species name in reference to the Mifune group and Mifune town. Yeah, 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 another placeholder name, but whatever. Once they turned the unique and not-so-unique anatomical traits of Nipponopterus into data and put that data to the test against the data of many other known Ashtarkid pterosaurs, the researchers found the new old beast was most closely related to an as-yet unnamed Ashtarkid known from very fragmentary remains from Mongolia. It's been nicknamed the Burkant Ashtarkid. This places both of them in the subfamily Quetzalcoatlinae, a group containing the largest animals to ever fly. Despite that association, Nipponopterus really wasn't all that massive. How massive, you say? Let's bring in the ever-helpful Mr. Man from Animal Planets the Most Extreme to show you how massive. The singular neck bone comes from an animal that the author team hypothesized was not fully grown at the time of death and may have belonged to an animal a little less than a meter in length. However, if that size is blown up to the sizes adult forms reach based on more complete remains of relatives, then the authors hypothesize Nipponopterus may have grown as large as 3 to 3.5 meters, 9.8 to 11.5 feet in wingspan, making it tall enough to almost look most of us in the eye. So not necessarily the terror of the skies that Hatsugopteryx or Quetzalcoatlus were, but still more than capable of giving a person a terrible time. Thanks, Mr. Man. The foot-thick layer that held the Nipponopter's fossil is sandwiched between layers of lithified ash, and lithified ash is great for radiometric dating. Unfortunately, these specific layers of ash have yet to be dated, so a date for Nipponopterus has to be averaged from the presence of other fossils in the same layer and above and below it, plus other dates that have been collected for other parts of the formation. Just such a date has been generalized as around 93 to 86 million years ago, or the Turonian to Coniacian stages of the late Cretaceous Epoch. What type of world was that? Well, the rocks preserve red shale, green shale, fine sandstone, conglomerate sandstone, and tuff. These sorts of sediments are laid down by the actions of rivers, streams, and lakes. And of course, tuff is lithified ash, so that means the area experienced periodic volcanic events. This tells you the area was not unlike many areas that preserve fossils the world over. Conifers, cycads, perhaps the first inklings of flowering plants and ferns were prominent flora, with braided rivers, streams, and channels cutting up the region and feeding it with moisture. The presence of freshwater mollusk and algae fossils confirms the freshwater floodplain and wetland nature of the area at the time. Since the group of rock units is slapped with temp labels, you can probably assume not much is known from them, and that would be true. Aside from Nipponopterus and invertebrates, the next named animals from the rocks are the turtles Atticus, Sashimis, and Geunfucaloides. Fragmented dinosaur kibbles and bits have been found from these rocks, but are too indeterminate to name, or are and are currently being studied. So the typical lush Cretaceous riverside world where a thirsty Nipponopterus came to take a drink and rest before getting its life cut short and leaving behind only a single vertebra. 
For more interesting stories about nature, the history of life, or what goes bump in the night, subscribe, like this video, drop a comment in the comment section below, and hit the bell icon to stay in the know with everything Edge. Thanks for watching.